Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this letter, it doesn't really say what the ramifications are going to be. It says what you guys are going to try to do to me. Okay. I would guess that's the result of the statute. No, it's not the result of the statute. What the result of the statute is, is it will be a lot messier than, you know, what it is that you guys, you know, state here, like, oh, it's going to be so easy to just pick you up and, you know, bring you in and uh, charge you a thousand dollars and send you to jail when you harmed nobody. But, um, you know, um, uh, do you, do you, uh, you took an oath to uphold the Constitution, correct? I guess so. Okay. Um, do you uh, recognize this phrase from the Constitution, a, a person's right, God-given right, to uh, pursue happiness? Okay. Okay, you do. You recognize that phrase. I'm just going by what you say. I haven't, I, I'm not quoting parts of the Constitution. You don't even know the Constitution. Words, not mine. You, you took an oath to the Constitution. You don't recognize that the Constitution states every American's right to pursue happiness. Okay. Do you, do you think right. that do you think that it's my pursuit of happiness that without having harmed anybody, I be imprisoned for six months? That would be your choice to comply with the statute, if you call it a statute, or not. No, no. That's um. You know this this has uh. I don't know my my right to pursue happiness. Uh, I don't know, your, your attempt to imprison me when I have not harmed anybody would be an, uh, an assault against my right to pursue happiness. Do you not recognize that? Again, this is your choice. You can make the choice. You do not have to come to Massachusetts to provide a DNA sample. You can provide it in your state. They... You can make arrangements and have your own private doctor do it. So, it's up to you. You can choose to do it or choose not to do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think about this option that I defeat this in court? That uh, I hire a lawyer to argue against uh, this gross uh, I don't know, infringement upon my privacy? I think that's your choice. Okay, that, that is my choice. And uh, do, you, do you think that that's a, a sensible choice for me to do? Or uh, do, you, do you think that it's a crapshoot and I'll probably just waste my money on the lawyer? I have no opinion either way. It's yeah. your choice. Do you recognize how grossly criminal lawyers are? Have you ever looked for lawyer jokes online? Uh, no, I haven't. Like, you could you could scroll through, like, a hundred pages on Google of results for lawyer jokes, and you would not come to the end of all the lawyer jokes, joking about how all the lawyers are corrupt. Well, I think everyone has their own opinions about things. You seem to have your opinion about things. Yeah. I also have a study of the present uh, geopolitical situation. Uh, from the perspective of a genius, I have a more than 140 IQ, and so uh, when I read the news and I uh, when I read what's going on with the with the political system, I recognize that you and all your cronies are grossly corrupt. That you're not enacting law; you're trying to profiteer off of statute. C can I ask what uh, you know? Give me like in the decade uh, what your uh, what your salary is that you make like forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars per year, something like that. Is that about right? First of all, I would say what I make has no relevance whatsoever. Oh, sure it does because provided. because you know you are biased uh, to to go along with this gross criminality by the fact that you're being paid fifty thousand dollars a year to go along with this gross criminality. You know, you know what that makes you? It makes you a, a crime profiting slime lord. It makes you it makes you detestable. That you know, when I present to the jury trial that you guys are willing to kidnap me, you know, for uh, for when you know for something that I did absolutely nothing to harm anybody, and you know, you guys are are gonna attempt to kidnap me. Uh, you know, if you guys can you know wrangle up some you know some uh. Yeah, uh, what would it be? It would be like, um, 
uh, some some political uh, backing to abduct me from my home in in a neighboring state. Again, you have the option to provide a DNA sample in your own state, so you wouldn't even have to come to Massachusetts. Yeah, why should I provide a DNA sample? Why should I allow you guys to breach my privacy? Because it's required by the 22E statute that we've discussed. For uh, for this thing that happened eight years ago that nobody ever told me you know, anything about having to provide a DNA sample. Well, I guess your counsel should have advised you but if you seem like you're smart enough and knowledgeable in the law, which it seems like... You know, that's that's not how these things work, is that uh, when they're going to roll out a, a program like this, where it's a gross criminality, that the state is going to abuse people, is going to abuse their privacy rights and stuff like that, they don't immediately distribute the information on what they're doing to all of the lawyers and start having them ask for the DNA and all that. What they do is they let the statute exist under the, uh, you know, under uh, the... You know, under this or behind the scenes, you know, without you know, without pushing it in everybody's face, they let it exist for a long time until you know they're able to wrangle a few people in by it, you know, and breach a few people's privacy rights, and then after they have a hold like that, then they begin to unleash it on everybody that they can nab with their you know uh, with their uh, you know uh, criminal uh, aggression against people's rights, you know, human rights. God-given rights, constitutional rights, privacy rights, you know, all this stuff that, you know, that's what they do is, you know, first they, they, uh, they released a little test run of it and they don't push it so hard. And so that's probably why in 2004, when they were writing this into, um, you know, when they were writing this statute, they, uh, they might not have, you know, presented this to me, uh, right then. And you say that, you know, now there's a mass mailer going on that they're, they're trying to get a bunch of people all at the same time to submit to this breach of their privacy privacy rights, is that correct? I would say that computerization is allowing us to notify more individuals that are required to provide a DNA sample. Okay, so just like I said, all of a sudden, you know, they're sending out these letters left and right, and they, they think that everybody's going to comply with this, that, you know, or, you know, that they're going to uh, boost their, uh, boost the profits of the prison industry, you know, that uh, they're going to be able to wrangle the Massachusetts taxpayer out of some more money to put people in jail on victimless crime as they're creating by statute. I guess that's your opinion, right? You know, maybe it's my opinion. Maybe it's really what's going on. Again, that would be your opinion. Okay. Well, uh, could you send me my whole file, whatever it is that, um, you know, whatever it is that uh, enacted that this this letter be sent to me? Could you send me the whole thing? Yeah, uh, send me like whatever it is that you guys uh, think that uh, I don't know whatever, whatever uh, violation of the law you guys claim was uh, worth you know my having to submit DNA to you guys. I think everything is spelled out in that letter for you. It's not though. I don't know what this is in regard to. You say some incident that occurred in two uh, thousand and four but I don't recognize what that is. Right, but I can't send you anything because I don't know who you are. Right, but you guys have my address on record there, and it's an accurate address, and you guys know that I live here, so you can definitely send it to me. So, you know, if, if you're not going to do that because, you know, you're going to, you know, dance around the situation and try to not reveal to me more information, we're just going to spell out that you guys are corrupt, I, then, then I, sure. I would hope that you are going to refer this to your supervisor and request of him and uh, provide me his name or her name uh, that you know re make the request that I be sent the whole file as to why it is that uh, that I'm being uh, Again, you know, threatened with, with kidnapping. The sample. It's your responsibility to have done it. You didn't do it. So that's what that letter says. It's up to you if you choose to do it. Who's your supervisor? Choose to do it. You have a choice to come to Massachusetts and do it. Oh, you have a choice to have it done in your state. That's that's your supervisor's name? You have a choice to come to Massachusetts? Look, those are your choices. Are okay. you going to comply or not? 
Who is your supervisor? My supervisor? Yeah. Who do you answer to? I understand that there's a chain of command. I've been in the Navy. You know, I know that you're not the top ding -a ling on Earth. You know, you are not the Emperor. So, let's hear this. Who is your supervisor? Uh, let's see. We'll say it's Sergeant Smith. Sergeant Smith. Mm-hmm. Okay, and what's Sergeant Smith's contact information? Well, I can transfer you to his line. No, I'd, I'd like to have his contact information so, you know, I'm able to get back directly to him so I don't have to call in and go or through you, you again. called in off that paper. Right, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to call in and talk to some receptionist to talk to you to, to talk you. That's to somebody his else. Information. What's that? That's his contact information. That I have to call through three people in order to get in touch with Sergeant Smith. Again, that's his contact information. Well, that doesn't make a bunch of sense to me. You know, it doesn't make sense that in order to get in touch with one person, I have to oh, call no, in and talk to three people. That I have to call in and talk to three people in order to get in touch with one Sergeant Smith. I guess so. Maybe if you call in and ask for Sergeant Smith, they'll connect you right to Sergeant Smith. Oh, okay. So uh, you're going to give me the 800 number that's on the sheet for the contact information of Sergeant Smith. Correct. Okay. What, what was your rank again? It's Trooper. Trooper? Correct. Go ahead. Trooper, trooper is a rank? What is that, like the lowest rank? Is that below sergeant, obviously? It is below sergeant, yeah. What's the lowest rank in, in, the, uh, in the scheme there? Uh, I believe it would be trainee. Trainee. Okay, and uh, how far above trainee is trooper? How many levels? Uh, at least one or two levels, depending on what rank. Have you ever put your baton in a man's ass crack? I have not. You haven't? Oh, okay. I have not. That's good. It happened to me. A state pig in Massachusetts, he put his baton in my ass crack after he yelled baton wedgie. Okay. Do you have no opinion on that? I have no opinion on that. Do you think that that was harassment? Again, I have no opinion on that. But you're calling to talk about DNA. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just trapping you in all kinds of different ways that you're criminal, you know, so, so, uh, you know, someday when your criminality catches up with you, that you'll recognize, you know, you deserve exactly what happened to you. Again, that's your opinion. You have a choice to provide DNA or not provide DNA. Oh, okay. No choice. Well, why don't you give me Sergeant Smith? Okay, I'll transfer you over. Sergeant Smith, this is Daniel Kelly. I received a notice from uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of State Police requesting uh, that uh, I provide a DNA sample. Now, I was told that uh, there was an incident in 2004. I wasn't involved in any type of state police incident since 2001, and uh, that incident was harassment that I was baton wedged. I literally had a state policeman stick a baton in my ass crack and yell baton wedgie. That was after a bunch of his buddies beat me and that was after I had to run away from a routine traffic stop that one of the state cops had pulled out a baton and began to beat me. Uh, there was another cop there who was actually who pulled me over, uh, a Framingham cop that um, he, he pulled me over without being able to uh, without being able to gauge my speed uh, accurately and um, I don't know, he, he was pulling me over for speeding, but uh, I don't know, the, the state cop showed up and he turned it into a disaster. He tried to thieve my license, then he beat me with a baton, then I ran away from the situation, and when they found me on the side of the road, one of the state cops put a baton in my ass crack. 
and uh, li really literally yelled baton wedgie. Uh, this, this was uh, in the midst of my receiving a beating while laying face down with my hands on my back by a bunch of state cops. Anyhow, um, you know, I haven't had any, uh, any interaction with the state police uh, apart, from, apart from that, you know, uh, you know, that and other routine traffic stops. And um, so I don't know what this is in reference to that I've received this letter that says that you guys, it is your intention to kidnap me, to take me 400 miles away from my home where I have 11 cats to feed daily, and uh, that uh, it's your intention to... Um, to imprison me for six months with my not having injured anybody. There's, there's not even any claim of my having injured anybody, yet you guys are saying that you're going to imprison me for six months. So, you know, this does not mesh with legality. This is not law that you guys are sending to me here. It is statute, and it will be defeated in court when it is that I have to go to court on this. But, you know, in preparation for court, I need for you to send me the whole file. I need to know everything it is that's going on with this. Why it is that I am receiving this threat of kidnapping by the Massachusetts State Police. And, um, I don't know, they say here, I'll, I'll just read the whole message to you. Records of the Massachusetts State Police Code as collection and investigative unit indicate that you are in violation of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 22E, Section 11, which states, any person required to provide a DNA sample pursuant to this chapter and who refuses to provide such DNA sample shall be subject to punishment by a fine of not more than $1,000 or imprisonment in a jail or house of correction for not more than six months or both. Now, uh, it says refusal, that uh, if the person refuses. Now, uh, that doesn't even apply to this situation because I have never refused to provide my DNA. I wasn't aware that anybody was seeking my DNA until, until this letter showed up to my house earlier today. So, you know, right off the start, you guys are lying in this letter saying that I refused to provide DNA when I was never asked for my DNA. You know, so, uh, you know, my, my initial reaction to this is that, you know, this is an egregious crime that you guys are enacting against me and you're starting, you know, with this uh, attempted breach of my privacy rights by, uh, by threatening me and uh, by, by lying. I have never refused, yet it says the reason that somebody might be uh, subjected to the, uh, the fine and imprisonment is because of their refusal. I have never refused, and you say in this letter that I am in violation uh, because of my refusal, but I have never refused. So, you know, this whole thing is predicated on so much nonsense that you know, I am going to easily slay this case in court. So I would beg you guys to, you know, to do smarter than, than to try to drag me into court on you know, what it is that I didn't injure anybody and you guys are grossly trying to abuse my privacy rights. And what this is going to turn into, it's going to turn into exposure of the Massachusetts State Police for being grossly criminal for baton wedging people and uh, for generally harassing political dissidents, which is that's my scenario or that's my case. That's that's what it is that.